today uh, we're going to talk about um, and a study we did with uh, EMTB called Technical Feasibility of the Best Grid Booster Project for Integrating More VRE Generation into the Chilean Power System. As Anton said, my name is Eugenio Quintana and I am from the Power System Studies Department from the Coordinador Electrico Nacional. Um, that is the independent system operator from Chile. So this is the, the agenda. First, uh, I'm going to start describing the Chilean power system to, to make uh, some context. Uh, be, uh, later, we are going to make a description of the best system project. And later, uh, we are going to describe how we build uh, the database in MTP. Um, after that, we are going to explain how we project that database to 2025 and how we uh, created the stress scenarios. Later, a uh, brief description of the modeling of the best grid booster project in MTP. And finally, the results and some conclusions. So first, we want to start with some context of why we need the best grid booster project. So here is a description of the Chilean power system for those who don't know it. Um, the frequency of the system is 50 Hertz. And the main statistic, statistic for 2022 are that the peak demand is 11.5 gigawatt. Uh, the installed capacity is 33 gigawatt. And, and renewables are 60% of the installed capacity and fossil fuels 39%. Um, but when you go to the annual electricity generation, you see that the fossil fuels increase their share of the generation. But in some hours, as you can see in the, here in the peak generation of IVR, you can see that in some hours, you can reach 65% uh, of the total generation. And also a main feature of our system is that it is very long. It has three, a thousand kilometers and is only 100 kilometers wide. And the system is mainly comprised from uh, of uh, 500 kV and 220 kV lines. Um, here are the five voltage control areas of the system, the big north here, the small north here, the center, center south and south. The main feature of the big north is, is that it has a high demand because it has the bigger copper mining industries and also has uh, the most solar capacity and some wind power plants. And finally, it has some um, coal and gas uh, power station. The small north uh, also has mining company, but less than the big north. Also has solar, but less also, and has more wind. The center is the subsystem where the half of the population of the country lives, and also has many coal and gas uh, generation. The center south uh, has a high demand because also has a uh, high population concentrated there. But uh, the main feature of the part of the system is that it has the vast majority of the hydro production of the system and also has some wind. And finally, the south is the smallest uh, subsystem. And one of the features is that it has increasing amount of wind generation. With all of this in mind, you can see that the north and the big north and the small north has, uh, they have a lot of uh, 
uh, solar and wind capacity installed uh, even greater than their demand. So uh, when the sun shines, the North can supply their own demand and, and can spare. The electricity surplus go to the center, center south part of the system where most of the population concentrates and industries operate. But the transmission system capacity is limited. The bottleneck is the 400 k kilometers, uh, 500 kV corridor between Nueva Panda Sucor and Polpaico here. Just uh, linking all the north and the center part of the system. The long, the long term solution for that is the bipolar HBDC LCC system um, between Kimal and Loaguire. Kimal is here in the big north, and Loaguire is here in the center. That system is uh, 105, 1,500 kilometers long, and it has a capacity of 3 gigawatts and is expected to be commissioned in 2029. So in the meantime, to avoid increasing renewable generation curtailment, a faster solution is needed. So that's why <clears throat> um, the Parinas La Guerra Grid Booster Project was uh, uh, ne needed. Now, here you can see the system, big north, small north center, and from now on, the blue is 500 kV and green is 220 kV. So the big, uh, the grid booster project, as you can see, um, his uh, objective is to increase the capacity of the small north 500 kV system when the flow goes south to take advantage of the large amount of BRE generated in the northern areas. The project consists in two 500 MVA batteries, one in Parinas here, and the other in Laguire in the center here. The distance between the two substations is close to uh, 1,100 kilometers. Um, when the fault occurs in one of the lines of the 500 kV corridor, the best in Parinas charges there you can see is this chart at the beginning and all absorbed by 500 megawatts and the best in Laguire, this charges you can see is or at the beginning is charged and or inject 500 megawatt to alleviate the overload in the healthy line for a period of up to 15 minutes to achieve that the measurement, the measure signals must communicate fast enough with the central control system through a redundant communication system. You can see here are six uh, six lines, and each and in each line you can you need to monitor the two extremes and then send the signals to this uh, central control system, uh, and this central control system will send the, the signals to both Beth at Parinas and Laguire. Now, um, building a detailed MTP database. Um, some of the sanctions we, we make um, to model the, the database is that all the 500 kV and 220 kV transmission line were considered, as you can see here. The blue is 500 and the green is uh, 220. Power plants with uh, installed capacity greater than 20 megawatt and reactive power static compensation were modeled and validated with the information that we had. Um, the model validation of the power plants was done mainly with dynamic models from the MTP library and to validate those models we obtained um, the, the data from the test with the PDT validated models in the Xilin power factory that is the software we use to make PDT analysis the test considered were 
variables that changes in the active power, reactive power, and voltage, and short circuits. In the case of IBR generation, uh, photovoltaic and wind plants, the IBR data fed tool was used. Finally, it MOFs and their protections in the uh, 500 kV lines were modeled due to the relevance to the system stability. So here is the whole system. And here are some examples of some of the uh, unit generation. For example, here is a synchronous machine. Here is an IBR generation, a, a bar compensation, the statcom in this case. And finally, the MOP system. Here you see the series compensator um, or capacitor, the switch, the, the search arrester, and the protection. This is the whole MOP system. And some of the tests are shown here in the following figures. The, the PDT curves are in blue and the EMTP curves are in red. So you can see for some of the plants, we, we could get some pretty good fit. Uh, here's a synchronous machine, a photovoltaic power plant, and finally an statcom in the center part of the system. To achieve the model integration, the system was divided into three subzones. Here, the big north, then the small north, and later we put together the center, center south, and south part of the system. The validated models were integrated and tested separately. Once each subsystem was stable, full integration was carried out. Once the integration was done, a flat run and a two-phase to ground fault at Polpaico in the center of the system, right here or right there, um, were performed when the flow uh, for the main corridor is 1,200 megawatt, 70% uh, of nom nominal capacity, and 2,000 megawatt, 117% uh, of nominal capacity. You can see the flat run is very flat. And later, the, for the fault, we use three scenarios. One is without the MOV model, um, the series capacitors were not bypassed. And this uh, scenario is pretty unrealistic. And you can see very pessimistic. The voltages reach two per unit, and that's not feasible. Then the green line, and you can see the MOFs were not modeled, but the series capacitors were bypassed. This is an optimistic uh, assumption, and is the assumption we used um, for the PDT simulations. And finally, the blue is when the MOF system is modeled, and it's a more realistic approach, but only possible with EMTP or EMT software. To project the system uh, for 2025, the, the PDT database for long-term planning were used as a reference. Most new power plants are IBR, so WAC models from the EMTP library and the recommended parameters were used. MOVs and the protections in the 500 kV corridor were modeled due to the relevance to the system stability. IBR protections were disabled. So here are the reference scenarios we, uh, that were stressed to reach the increased expected capacity in the main corridor. Um, and the first scenario represent a very um, um, stressed um, scenario for the system because we have, we have never reached that kind of flow for the main corridor. And also we did some sensibility, reducing a little the, the, the flow for that line. And also we repeated for the 2025 scenario, A1 -A scenario, the exercise done for the series capacitor uh, previously. So you can see, but well, the red, the green and the blue are the same. 
And you can see that um, in, in this case, the PDT approach is too optimistic for the, for the reality. The blue one is the, ball, the MOP model, and you can see that the system loses uh, stability. So when the power flow in the main corridor is increased by 25% compared to today's limitation, the PDT approach is insufficient and also misleading. So a system stability is highly dependent on the MOP system of Polpaico series capacitors. Oh, a brief description of the model um, for the grid booster. Uh, the AC DC converter model uh, was obtained from the power electronics library and uh, was connected to Parinas and Loaguirre in the 20, to, uh, 120 kV side. The best mo was modeled as a DC voltage source plus a resistance. And the active power RAM signal was sent uh, 100 milliseconds after fault clearance. And the, the fault clearance is done at uh, 2.12 seconds. You can see here the, the signal, the delay, and the, how this delay activate the both uh, best, one in Loagira and the other in Parinas. And when the signal is, um, is there, the, the, the best is activated and injects active power to the system through the AC DC converter. Here are the parameters of the best, the, the capacity, the energy, um, because our um, 15 minutes of um, is working the best, uh, the capacity in MBA and later some other parameters. And now the parameters of the, 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 the plant, general data, uh, transformer data, and also control data. The result of the analysis, a uh, fault was made um, at second two, and the line trips after 120 milliseconds, uh, because this is the grid cause the code worst case scenario. Uh, 12 fold locations um, uh, were made, uh, each at the terminal of each line uh, from north to south. Uh, and the kit grid code requirements are that voltages must not drop below uh, 0.7 per unit after uh, 50 milliseconds of the fault clearing time. Voltages uh, shall not remain below uh, 0.8 per unit for more than one second, and voltages must reach the 10% band of the final value in no longer than uh, 20 seconds. The different cases were created using A1 and A2 scenarios with different ramps. For example, 50 and 1,000 megawatt per second ramp, and different fall right through limits of reactive power compensation devices were also used. For example, here the fall right through um, um, threshold uh, to, to start the, the injection of current in one, uh, 0 0.1 per unit, and also a, a, a smaller one and a, and a bigger one. Simulations were performed in the Simulation Studio toolbox for parallel computing in MTB. A total of 12 cases are set up for each grid configuration, one for each fault location. So you have the 12 folds, um, two per line, and also six, uh, 12 scenarios, 12 cases, and for the two main scenarios. And now the results. With sufficient reactive power contribution from compensation devices such as STATCOMs and SVCs, uh, the reactive power ramp of the grid booster converter has a minor impact on the grid stability. Uh, for example, we, can, we could set the ramp at 
uh, 50 megawatt per second and the system is stable. This is highly dependent on the fault right through setting of, of those equipment. But if that parameter, the fault right through settings can be changed, a ramp of 1000 megawatt per second may be required. No overload, uh, overload was required and the Q limited to 32% of the nominal power provides stable results. And finally, as a sensibility, uh, one module of 100 megawatt from the grid booster uh, was out of service and the system was stable in that case. Um, now with the grid booster project included, the same exercise was done for the series capacitor. And you can see that um, now again, the the PDT approach is closer to the EMT approach, but we we uh, we it's impossible to know it in advance without performing the EMT EMT simulations. Now some conclusions: an EMT database was built for the current system using validated models from the EMTP library and some detailed models. To integrate the database, the system was divided into three subsystems. An MTP database for the 2025 system was built using uh, the PDT model for long-term planning as, as a reference. Future infrastructures were modeled using the same criteria as for 2022. The grid booster project was modeled in some parameters such as the fall recovery RAM rate were estimated to comply with the voltage stability and recovery requirements from Chile grid code. And as we obtain better models of the system critical infrastructure, updating the analysis is essential. And however, that dynamic model from the MTP library and search arrested models give us a good starting point to take the necessary precautions to avoid stability problems in the system main corridor. And thank you.